In chapter six, we're going to record transactions in a general journal. So we're just adding another part to what we've been doing. So I want you to think of a journal as a place where all the transactions are kept in one spot. Um, and so we need a place for that. So we're going to start out the same way we have in de demo problem one journalizing and owner's investment. So read the transaction, figure out which two accounts are affected. And um, we'll go a little bit deeper and answer some questions. And then I'll show you the new step in chapter six. So on April 2nd, Gail Gordon invested a calculator valued at 145 in her business, Gordon Enterprises. And then memo Memorandum for Memo 4 is the source document. So you have to figure out which two accounts are affected. Owner invested. So that's going to be the capital, G. Gordon Capital. And she invested what? Office equipment. Okay. So if you think about it, uh, G. Gordon Capital is owner's equity. Um, and on your demo problems at the bottom, you should be making two T accounts. Okay. Um, so we've got the capital and office equipment. The capital is owner's equity. Office equipment is an asset. Capital increases on the credit side. Asset increases on the debit. So if the owner invested, invested means the capital goes up. So that's a credit. And invested what? Office equipment goes up. So there's your debit and credit. Then I like to come back and answer questions one to five. Which two accounts are affected? The classification, which we've already done. So all these questions you can get right off of your T accounts. Um, is each account increased or decreased? The capital was increased. Office equipment was increased. Which account is debited? Office equipment. Which account is credited? Capital. Now, if you need to pause, make sure you pause, stop, and um, think about this before you move on. The new step, chapter six, is the general journal. So we have to take this and debit, credit, and source document. So you're going to need the date, the debit account, the credit account. So it's going to look like this, and it has to be pretty specific. Otherwise, it's going to be wrong. The month goes here. The day goes here. And I just scrunch 2020 right here. You could use a full line, but sometimes we won't have enough lines. So I just write it up here. Or you could write it right here if you're using Excel. The debit account is always listed first. So debit, credit, source document. The debit account is first and it's right over here. And you debit the amount for 145. Now these lines, these boxes mean something. So I like to use a dash for the cents. We don't really do a lot with cents, but that's where the cents would go. Five is in the, the singles, the tens, and then the hundreds position. And then if you had more, like a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, you would list it here. So don't start writing the number over here. Make sure it lines up. So we've got the debit account. The credit account you need to indent a little bit, okay, and put G. Gordon Capital and then put the credit. So it's debit, credit if we had more. Debit, credit, debit, credit, debit, credit. So this is the order. Even if you do it correctly um, and you put the credit account first and then the debit, it will be marked wrong. You always list the debit account first. And then after the credit, you indent a little bit more and you put the source document, whether it's a memo, a check, something like that. Now, if we had another transaction to do and let's say it happened on the 5th, you would not put 2020 again. You only write, uh, you only put the year again when the year changes. So 2021. You will not write April again. You only write April once. And then when it turns May, then you can write May. 
if you had two transactions on the same date, April 2nd, 2, 2, 2, you would keep writing the 2 so that each transaction has a number by it and the number is the date. So this 5, I just use this as an example. It didn't come from anywhere, but just an example. The other thing, um, be aware of that this is a general journal. So circle the G just so you know it's general journal and what page number you're on. Sometimes you're going to have to type the page number. So I'm going to walk you through one more um, and then give you the answers. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. So the next one, on April 9th, Gordon Enterprises purchased an office desk and chair valued at $600 on account from Custom Craft Inc. Invoice CC101. So you can pause, think about which two accounts are affected. And when you're ready, you can move on. So um, office equipment was debited for 600. Accounts payable was credited for 600. So you get all of this information and you can fill in steps one to five and just don't copy it, figure out why it is what it is. So I would not even look at this, try to figure it out and um, then check your answers. Okay, so what the new part for chapter six is this. So it's general journal. This is on page two. Um, put the, the year. Since we're on a new page, um, this is our first transaction. We're going to list this as is. So 2020, April, then the April 9th, the account that's debited always goes first and it lines up at the left margin. You indent the um, credited account. And because it's accounts payable, it's important now that we actually use um, the vendor that goes with this account, okay? And then indent a little bit more and put invoice CC101. Debit credit, and that's how you write the 600 and that's how it should go in those boxes. All right, um, and like I said again, if if you had another transaction that happened on the 9th, you would put nine again. And do not skip any lines. We will, you will run out of lines if you do that. So don't be skipping lines, just do the next one immediately again, okay? And you do have access to the answers to the rest. Have a great day.